We're back again with another travel size segment from the 52. This time, uh, we're going to talk about the Brett Pack. I was waiting for this, um, I've been waiting for this documentary to come out on Hulu uh, for, it's been a while now. It's It was done by uh, uh, Andrew McCarthy. He was one of the, the Brett Pack. And I was excited about it because I was hoping it was going to be about, uh, and it, it was fine, but I was hoping it was going to be more about like, the positive stuff and the good stuff, you know, I thought I was gonna be talking about, you know, the good times they had, but it threw me, it threw me, uh, threw me for a loop because he, uh, McCarthy, like I said, Andrew McCarthy, he, uh, made this little document, short little documentary, it was like an hour and a half, and he talked about, uh, uh, about the negative, the little, um, uh, the negative story they put out. I think it was in the was it the Rolling, New Yorker, the Rolling Stones, or New, New York Yorker, Times, I think. New York Times. I and uh, the guy interviewed. So initially, it was Emilio Estevez getting interviewed. They're talking about him because he was blowing up. This was in the, you know eighties, and he was blowing up. So they interviewed him, and he had a couple of friends. And so the 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 journalist made it come across like they were little spoiled brats and you know little pricks. And uh, Andrew McCarthy took it as uh, am I saying his name right? McCarthy? 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 I always I never know with you know I never, you never know with him. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, for, I guess for I guess for thirty years, uh, Andrew's been dealing with this issue. He felt like it was it kind of like pigeonholed them or a pigeon is a pigeonhole pigeonhole. Yeah, something about a pigeon <laughs> pigeon homing. Anyway, so he thought it was a negative a negative thing on them, and uh, it wasn't though. It was just he was kind of the guy, the journalist was just like saying, you know, it was just there were a young group of kids coming out for, on the scene, and you know they were taking over Hollywood. And it was changing the the look of movies, they're doing more kid movies, more teenage movies, you know, like uh, Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, you know, uh, Pretty Pink, things like that. Anyway, so the the art, the original article was made about Emilio Estevez and Emilio Estevez, the journalist comes back later and says, well, like right after they did the, like in the 80s, when they, the journalist like, well, that was his fault if he thought I was trying to be his friend because they thought it came out negative, you know, Emilio and them thought it was negative. But the journalist's like, well, that was on him. You know, I'm not here to be his friend. I'm a journalist. I'm doing my job. You know, I'm not here to, to be a nice guy. So anyway, the thing comes out. Andrew gets them all together. Like, Andrew, it's crazy. Like, the opening scene, Andrew's like, you know, I want to talk about this, this, this Brad Pack thing. And I'm going to, I'm going to reach out. You know, I haven't talked to these. It's so weird today. He goes, I haven't talked to these people in like over 30 years. Like, he, he called Rob Lowe. He called Demi, uh, Demi Moore. He called, um, he called them all. He called Emilio Estevez. He called Molly Ringwall. Judd Nelson. Uh, Judd Nelson. And uh, Ali Sheedy, Ali, by the way, Ali Sheedy, and the, the documentary was really cool. She was really nice. She was down to earth, and she she goes, I appreciate what we did. Like I, I this this yeah. People say the Brad Pack thing it was a name for me. It wasn't. He goes, those are memories that I would never take back. That whole that whole part of my life. She goes, was I would never want to take it back. She goes, it was perfect. She was cool. Like she was really. I, I enjoyed her part of the because he interviewed them all. Uh, the only ones that didn't come through was like, uh, of course, Molly didn't come through. Uh, Judd Nelson didn't come through. Um, who else didn't? It was like someone else didn't come through. They didn't do it. But it was cool to see uh, John Cryer did come on there, and John Cryer was really, really. Uh, he didn't age well. Mm -hmm. Ducky didn't age well. I thought the duck, uh, the duck man didn't age well. Um, he doesn't do bald well. He didn't. The ball didn't do too well for him. But uh, anyway, but he was he was sincere about it, and he was pretty cool about it. He interviewed. He's just like you know, I didn't even know I was. He goes, I, for me, I didn't even know I wasn't involved in the bar. I didn't know I was included. He goes, it's cool that you're including me. He goes, but. I didn't think I was in the Brad Pack, he goes. And a lot of people were saying that, like, when they were interviewing, because they also talked, like, different, <coughs> excuse me, they also talked to, like, different folks, like, um, people who write about uh, nostalgia, shit like writers and things of that nature, and, and columnists and whatnot. And they were all said the same thing. It was like, we didn't know who was in the Brad Pack. Was it, you know, like, Tom Cruise in it? Who was in it? So, but it was really cool to see all these, the old, all these old stars, that I, these actors that came watching, and I didn't know that at the time, Emilio uh, Estevez, during this time, he was 23, and the dude was, like, directing and writing fucking stuff, and it was just like, dude, 23 years now, man, could, you know, it's hard to tie their shoes, though, but to see this guy doing that kind of stuff on that level was insane, dude, but, um, you know, I didn't know that, and anyway, so, <clears throat> my point, uh, my thing here is, um, so Andrew goes to all these, to goes to, sees all of them in person, he goes to, first one was, uh, what's his name, Emilio Estevez, and dude, Emilio was like, they're in, the, they're in Emilio's kitchen. They're talking. They're and they're having like a you know period or whatever. And Emilio's like a real douche. Like he's really standoffish and like kind of rude. And like he doesn't like he doesn't want to be in the thing like in the in the movie in the documentary. But he said he was telling Andrew. He was telling him he's like man I don't want to do anything with the nostalgia stuff. Like I don't want anything. They try to call me back for like 
you know, be it whatever, like the Breakfast Club, like I guess like a reunion kind of thing. He goes, he goes, I'm not into it. It's not my thing. He's like, I, I want to leave the history. I want to leave the past where it's at. He goes, I don't really care about it. He goes, but I did want to do this thing with you, Andrew, because you were there with me and you were a part of me in that in that in that at that time. So I wanted to do this with you. So that was that was pretty. Like I say it was really cool to see all the actors, all the old actors come back. Like I said, Ali Sheedy was great. Rob Lowe did it. Rob Lowe was fantastic, man. Like he still looks fucking good. I'm jealous that he looks. He's like 80 years old. He looks fantastic. <laughs> uh, Rob Lowe did it. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I had been waiting for this documentary to come out, and it is on Hulu. Like I said, short, short, uh, short little, you know, little documentary. Uh, like I said, Andrew did it all himself. I think he uh, he did it, up, funded it himself the whole night. And um, at the end, I think like to, to to bring it home, the whole thing they brought it home was they spoke. He spoke to that journalist, and the journalist is old now. He's like you know, whatever the hell, seventy or eighty years old. But the journalist, and they sat and they talked about it, and they they, they talked about. It. And the journalist, like I wasn't trying to do anything, you know, wasn't a negative thing. He goes, I was just doing my job because I was just doing my job and you could tell that Andrew was looking for an apology uh -huh. like to apologize for all this that because like I said again they felt like it was it put them in a bad light because they were these spoiled brats you know the brat pack you know he put it he goes, but he goes it wasn't dude I was saying that that the name I gave y'all was in the in the in in the, it's like a trending thing at that time like like now with you know x when things are trending whatever the case may be what is trending that's what was trending at the time and I made that like hashtag go but it wasn't a hashtag back it was just an article but he goes i made that launch and i felt like that did that helped y'all like that gave y'all uh a genre and y'all ran with it and he goes so i feel like i helped y'all but anyway you could tell like andrew was looking for an apology and that guy was just not gonna give it up i loved that like he yeah. did, but he like doubled down <laughs> yeah like, he tried to get him to do it <clears throat> andrew mccarthy said he tried to do it again yeah and he was like uh if you could change anything would you and that guy's like, like no nope. he goes that was a part of my history that was a part of my growth that was my uh, career at the time and he goes and I, and I think it, it, it helped me it launched it launched himself of course because he that was a big article at the time but that was great i thought and then what was the other couple things that we're talking about on there that was pretty good um uh like rob Lowe was rob Lowe was like dude you can't look at it in a, in a negative light dude you gotta look at it like the shit that we did the shit that we accomplished he goes you know we talk all the shit about the brat pack but we got to hang out with the rat pack you know we got to hang out with uh, they, they were at dinner. It was Rob Lowe and, uh, and Andrew McCarthy, McCarthy, and they were e eating dinner at a at a fancy posh restaurant in L.A. And with Eliza Minnelli, Eliza Minnelli shows up, <laughs> and they're eating with her, and they're like, "Holy shit, we're eating with Eliza Minnelli!" And then uh, they say, "Well, shit." Andrew's like, "Why? Let's go hang out." You know, they got invited, I guess, to go to Sammy Davis Jr.'s by house Liza. by Eliza, and they went. And he's like, "Dude, we were hanging out with Sammy Davis Jr.," and Sammy Davis Jr. tells them, "I watch your movies. I love your stuff. Like, that's cool." Like, he goes. The, so that's what Rob Lowe was telling us. Like, dude, we got the biggest compliment ever. Like, this guy is endorsing us and telling us that we're awesome. So he goes, no, dude, we shouldn't. This is not a negative thing. And to wrap it all up, you could tell, like, Andrew kind of took it in and finally accepted that it wasn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. By the way, Demi Moore, <sighs> I thought she was the hottest thing on the on earth. But holy shit. I, I, I know everybody gets old. I get it. Everybody gets old. But she did something with her thing. And Jennifer said something here. Like, they cut the meat out here? They they, yeah, cheek? it's like on the inside of the cheek. They cut the, they cut the fat, fat out, basically. And you're like a sharp... Like, and it gives you like a, a sharp cheekbone, but that will never grow back. It wow. will always be like that. And that one side looked like it was way more... Yeah, it was like a little other. more cut. And I'll put an image in there so it's you guys can good. see. But holy crap, man. But if you do have time, check out this document, documentary. It was, uh, it's called The Brad Pack. And it just kind of goes over... Uh, for me, it was great to see these... It was, it was good to see these people. You know, I hadn't seen... Who was it like? Like Ali Sheedy, I hadn't seen her in forever. Uh, God, it was just, it was. Just, he also threw some other folks in there. He also threw some other folks in there that I hadn't seen in a while too, like some uh, like directors and shit. The guy that directed uh, Pretty in Pink, because uh, uh, John Hughes wrote wrote that, right? He wrote that, wrote and produced. produced it, yeah. But Pretty in Pink was directed by. So I forget the guy's name was, but. Uh, but it's that thing too. Like we grew up hearing about the Brat Pack. Did you ever think that that was negative? I never thought it was negative. I never thing. thought it was. I thought it gave that that was them. That was just them. That was them. And like I said, I and like we were discussing that we were talking about that where I I thought that like uh, I thought uh, was it was her name Lee uh, Leah Thompson Leah Thompson I thought she should have been in there. You also made a good one too. Was Anthony Michael Hall wasn't in that? Like he's in all of the movies. Yeah, yeah and he like, wasn't in that. He, he should have been a part that. of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, you know, Ralph Macchio, and they I were. Mean, I, I felt like there was other ones that should not Ralph Macchio, but I felt like there was other <laughs> nice. ones that should have been a part of it more than even some of the ones that were in it. Yeah, um, I didn't realize Demi Moore was in 
the Rat Pack? I thought she was just insane on Mom's Fire. She was, but I think was I guess she was around. Was she in a lot of other movies then, or no? I, I don't know. I just I, I don't remember her being in those, but like in like in those teen movies, like that's what yeah, I'm saying. Pretty that's Pink, why those I thought it was like, like sixteen candles. She was. I don't remember. I feel like there's those. other more like iconic people that should have been involved in it, but that's what they were saying is there's not a set list of people. Yeah. That are in the Brat Pack, right? You know. Yeah. It's just. Who do you think should be in that? There? It was just that year, the eighties, yeah, you know, and then that, that whole that whole decade was amazing movies. Right. I thought there should have been more people involved in that. More of the, more of the, like you said, even what's his name, like an Iron Man. Oh yeah, Robert Downey right. Jr. Mm -hmm. He should have been in it. I think he should have been in it. I wish we would reach out to him and talk to him. You know, see what he thought because yeah. he's he's a real douche. I like his stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Rob Lowe looked great, man. It was, it was just crazy to see these guys. Um, uh, it was just a perfect storm. That that whole time was a perfect storm. All those kids, all those actors. Uh, one last thing. The reason why that that director, that that writer, I could not remember that what the journalist had said. He had said that he wrote that about them because, uh, or they felt that what he wrote felt made them feel like they weren't going to be more than just, they were going to be those like niche actors. They weren't going to be bigger than that. They were just going to be that 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 little realm. They're gonna, they weren't going to be as great as uh, you know as the greats. You know. Al Pacino, like those, they weren't, they were it's like they had their own category, they had their own lane, and that, that those movies were just like timeless for me, like uh, Ferris Bueller, all those movies were just, you know, the best for me, it's just, I can't, you know, those shaped everything I did, you know, everything I did, and then they also touched on like, um, and also too, during the, during the documentary, there's like a good soundtrack, there's like good music in it and everything, mm -hmm. it's just really good tunes in there, and uh, yeah. Uh, and that's one thing that what was the other we were talking about that that we said there's no soundtracks no like there's the, mm -hmm. this movie soundtracks aren't good like they like you used to go buy movie soundtracks before like they were worth buying like you know yeah I don't know like like when you showed we watched because we watched the Crow the other day and the Crow soundtrack was great you know it was great music it was just a good time for music and uh, well you when you watched it you knew when that movie was made yeah you could tell and you that's could why feel I it. think that's cool yeah, you it's could feel like it. you're gonna yeah. remember that you know. Now, movies, a lot of it's just, you know, produced music just for that movie. Yeah, yeah. And but, that's cool, but... Yeah, but I like having music that's going on right now, you know, yeah. so... Yeah, so if you have, uh, again, if you have time, check it out on Hulu, Brat Pack. Uh, it's actually really done, it's done well, and like I said, uh, it's just, it was just good to see that the uh, that, that genre getting their time. And it's the time right now, it's very, it's very nostalgia, is a big deal right now. People, mm -hmm. my age group is, is their, it's... Just kind of reflecting on our time and the, the shit we watched and the, the time we wasted watching <laughs> HBO. So, I don't know. I thought that was cool. So, check it out. Uh, 52 uh, keeps rolling. Uh, we got a few more things coming up. I, we're going to go uh, do some thunk, do some things. Uh, if I could talk. Do some things. Uh, go out. Get out of the house and do some stuff. Do some shooting. Do some uh, do some song segments. But I got... There's more coming. There's a lot more coming. And... Um, a lot of stuff. Just keep your eyes open, and uh, we appreciate you to continue to watch, uh, listening and watching. Thank you.